Hey guys, what's going on? It's Nate Rio here and I had a request from one of my private coaching students and he wanted to know what do you need to do and how frequently do you need to follow up with your email marketing and to follow up with your leads and all that nurturing and you know what does it really take to get conversions? So I did a little digging and um, I knew that there was uh, some good evidence out there and we're all taught that we need to follow up with our leads, but why do we really need to do that? So again, I wanted to find some concrete evidence and statistics that will uh, show us how people buy and how frequently we need to follow up with them in order to, to create conversions. So what I did is I went over and um, I found a really good blog post over at HubSpot and it listed literally the mother load of shocking statistics that you need to know if you're in sales or in marketing, um, whether it's online or you're in B2B selling. And uh, these statistics are, are pretty are pretty mind-blowing, uh, for lack of better words. So um, keep this in mind when you're doing your follow-ups. Um, and uh, what we're going to see here is that consistency is really the key. So the first shocking statistics that I saw were that 44% of salespeople give up after one follow-up. And then 80% of sales require five follow-ups. So what I wanted to do then is break down their huge list and put the most important things that I thought were relevant to the online marketing industry and what we're doing with email marketing and following up uh, prior to us uh, getting a sale. So a lot of you I know are out there buying clicks and buying traffic packages and you're not getting sales at first and you know really what the stats show is that it's normal. So let's take a look at uh, these stats here. So um, I'm going to go in no particular order but some of the important things I want to touch on are nurtured leads make 47% larger purchases than non-nurtured leads. Okay, so if you're just you know, putting out an ad and you have one offer and you're not following up, um, sure, you might get a sale even if you do uh, follow up. But if you're going for making the most profit, you want to really nurture those leads and make sure that you have a high ticket back end so that way your, your sales uh, will uh, follow your, your efforts. So make sure you follow up and then you can get those higher ticket, uh, larger purchase sales. Also, 63% of people requesting information on your company today will not purchase for at least three months and 20% will take more than 12 months to buy. Okay, so in my situation, a lot of people don't know this, but I've been in the online marketing world for about five years, and my first high ticket program, I was on someone's list, and I first got an email about it, and it took me six months before I ever chose to spend $49. Okay, so that was, um, you know, a, a, a very big breakthrough for me, not only to look at how I was spending and buying things as a consumer, but also how to use that knowledge in marketing. So you have to be following up with your, your customers consistently or they're not going to purchase. So somebody like me, I've spent a lot of money and I, and I buy products all the time. But with that one product, it took me six months before I ever spent $49. And I know a lot of you are selling things even higher priced than that. So you got to keep that in mind. So again, the key is to, to be following up consistently. Also, uh, when you're in your email marketing program, whether it's Aweber, MailChimp, um, Infusionsoft, things like that, you want to remember that personalized emails, including the recipient's first name and the subject line, have higher open rates. Okay, so if you're running a um, uh, solo ad, for instance, and you have an opt-in page, and uh, the user can either put just their email or typically it's going to be their name and email. It might help in the long run if you have their name because that way you can use the name in your autoresponder and you can put in that little snippet of code so that way when it sends out to the list it'll have their name in the subject line. So keep that in mind. Also, 40% of emails are opened on mobile first uh, where the average mobile screen can only fit four to seven words max. Okay, so what that means is in your subject lines, uh, the shorter the better. Uh, because a lot of people nowadays, let's face it, are opening their emails on their phones. Okay, so if you have some important copy in your headline and it's not showing up in their subject line, they're going to miss it anyway. Okay, also subject lines that create a sense of urgency and exclusivity can give you a 22% higher open rate. All right, and then subject lines with more than three words experience a drop in open rate by over 60%. So that goes back to that, uh, that mobile stat I just showed you. So most people are opening on their phones anyway, but then you want to keep it to um, you know three words or, or less if you can. Obviously, that's not always the case, but you're going to see a, a, a decrease in open rate by over 60%. So you know if you have a, a thousand people that you're sending a list to and you're normally getting, I don't know, 300 to open it, um, that's going to decrease significantly um, by about you know 100 or so um, just because of that subject line. So these are um, some of the most important uh, stats I saw. But if you want, uh, go over to HubSpot and uh, have the link below this video, and you can check out all those statistics 
And um, keep this in mind when you're doing your following up. And again, the moral of the story with sales and marketing is constant follow-up, okay? So remember, 80% of your sales require five follow-ups. So you need to constantly be emailing your list to ensure that you have the highest chance for success. So anyway, I hope those stats helped you and uh, keep doing what you're doing. Keep creating copy, following up and nurturing your list and uh, we'll see you next time. All right, take care.